hello and welcome. In this video, we will take a closer look at delta. In the last video, I mentioned that the delta is the rate of change in an option's value when there is a change in the price of the underlying stock. More formally, the delta is the rate of change in an option's value with respect to changes in price of the underlying stock. It is a bit of an oversimplification, but a simple way of thinking of it is, when the price of the stock changes one dollar, the delta is the percent of one dollar that the option will change in value. For instance, if a call option has a delta of 0 0.6 and the stock increases a dollar in value, then the option will increase 60 cents in value. If a call option has a delta of 0 0.4 and the stock increases a dollar in value, then the option will increase 40 cents in value. If a put option has a delta of negative 0 0.3, and the stock decreases a dollar in value, then the put option will increase 30 cents in value. If a put option has a delta of negative 0.7 and the stock decreases a dollar in value, then a put option will increase 70 cents in value. I also mentioned in the last video that the delta is the hedge ratio. Let's look at an example. Let's say that a trader has 300 shares of stock and he is worried that the price of the stock may drop. Therefore, the trader buys five put options that have a delta of negative 0.6. At this point, he is delta hedged. In other words, if the price of the stock drops a dollar, his 300 shares of stock drop a total of $300 in value. However, the delta of negative 0.6 means that for each dollar drop in the price of the stock, each option contract increases 60% of $100 or $60. The trader owns five puts so his stock decreased in value $300, but his put options increased $300. In other words, the option contracts increased in value the exact same amount that the stock decreased in value, so the trader was hedged against loss. If you remember from my last video, once the price of the stock does change, the delta changes as well. As the stock goes up and down in value, the delta increases and decreases. This means that once the stock price moves, a once hedged position is no longer completely hedged. To maintain a hedge, the ratio of option contracts to shares of stock must be readjusted by increasing or decreasing the amount of shares of stock or increasing and decreasing the number of option contracts so that the hedge ratio is once again balanced. Delta hedging was one of the keys to the Black-Scholes formula. The theory was that if one can theoretically continue to keep readjusting the ratio of option contracts to shares of stock on a continuous basis, then one could be constantly hedged and theoretically remove all risk of loss. Therefore, if that is true, then a bunch of theories must apply, or one can place offsetting trades and make more money than one can make on a risk-free investment such as a U.S. government bond without risk of loss. Delta hedging must be adjusted for more than just the changes in the price of the stock, as the delta also changes when there is a change in volatility, interest rates, or the time left until the option expires. Trading a hedge position is called delta neutral trading and will be the subject of a later video. An options delta is derived using probability. I mentioned in the first video that one can create a probability or odds curve of what the future value of the stock will be. For a call option, the delta is derived from a probability distribution of what the future value of the stock will be multiplied by the probability that the stock will be above the option strike price. Put another way, if and only if the option expires in the money, the delta is a probability distribution of how far into the money the option will be. So that is a bit more on an options delta. In the next video, we will compare buying a call option to selling a put option. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.